Hey, I'm Ashley Jane Lewis. I'm a creative technologist, I'm an Afrofuturistic artist, and I'm a tech educator. I'm really excited to bring this collab module to you at Culture Hub all around mass making and storytelling with Spark AR. So I am thinking about AR as perhaps the modern mask and how filters might now be um, creating some of the same intentions and thoughts, feelings, and modes of expression as masks have done for centuries. And I'd love to explore that with you. So in these four modules, we're going to look at masks as different like outputs, like why people are making different kinds of masks. So the first one that we'll do in this session is going to all, it's going to be around the um, purpose of masks as creative expression. Uh, the next module will be mass as protection. Um, the third one will be mass as cultural expression. And the fourth one will be mass as disguise. I think that each play an important part in our human history, but also in the way that we engage with technology today, right now. So I am really stoked about this session and I'm really excited to bring it to you. You only need a couple of things. You need Spark AR, um, which is the software we're gonna be using throughout this session. You need a notebook, a uh, pen, um, if you have a mobile device, you can test some of your filters that we make on your phone, but you don't have to. And I believe that's everything for this session at least. So grab those things. You can download that software while we do the first part of this activity. Um, but uh, first, I'm just going to tell you a little bit more about myself. So I said I was an Afrofuturistic artist, and I'll show you a couple examples of what I'm talking about. So here's some examples of my work. Um, I'm uh, an artist who thinks about the future of people of color and what their life might look like. And so I create using technology and fabrication and other kinds of design methods. I create these performances and art pieces that depict and explain what the future for people of color looks like. So here are a couple pieces, some examples. And you can find more about this work on my website or my Instagram page, which I'll link in the video so you can take a look. But I've been making this kind of work for um, like 15 years or so, maybe like closer to 12 years. And um, I have two degrees in technology, one from Ryerson University in Toronto and one from uh, New York University here in the States. And I really just enjoy working with these kinds of mediums, code, software, technology to create art. I'm also a technology educator, which means that a huge part of my work is around trying to make sure that other people like yourself learn how to use technology as well. This is really important for me that like, however many years down the line, lots and lots of people are working with this kind of technology um, for creative purposes. Uh, so I'm really excited about helping you get there with Spark AR. So that's a little bit about me. Um, back to the workshop, uh, I am really excited to think about the world of tech art and creative technology from the perspective of three C's. So that means that I'm thinking about technology from the position of creativity. So what can I make with this? This is all about trying to become less of a consumer of technology and more of like a producer of technology and producer of creative outputs from technology. And um, the creativity that we'll explore in this workshop is all around storytelling and trying to determine like what kind of um, narrative you're trying to convey with your work. The other C is curiosity. So we're going to learn a new skill. We're going to think a little deeper about some of the things that we kind of take as true or take as assumptions about technology and about art, mass, AR. And the last C is criticality. So this one's really important. So thinking about like, really, why are we doing things? Um, why are we doing these things in this way? What kind of exciting outputs are possible? What al also what kind of potential harm is possible? And using these three structures, creativity, curiosity, criticality, you can build like a really well-rounded creative practice where you're using technology because it's all around us, but you're also making sure that the technology we're using is in your best interest. 
working in ways that keeps you safe, working in ways that keeps you informed. And also, uh, you know, when new technology comes out, you can begin to have a voice in what that technology looks like and what it's, set, uh, what it's supposed to be doing for us as a society. So um, I'm excited to like ask you to lean in to these kinds of methodologies of thinking about tech with me. So let's get into it. I have some really exciting examples to show you. Um, so let's go take a look at some of these pieces. The first artist I want us to take a look at, um, these are all mask related artists, is a Los Angeles based designer named Laura Estrada. So she's a jewelry maker. I don't know if she would self-identify as a mask maker, but I've been really blown away by her work and all of the ways in which it's incorporated natural lines in the face, as well as like speculative or like imaginary futures for jewelry. So this is one of her pieces that I really adore. Um, look at all of these beautiful lines and the beadwork. And I think in the world of mask making, this is a really inspiring piece, um, something that can really help us consider the fluidity of what a mask could look like. So I love this piece by Laura Estrada. Uh, she has some other really beautiful work like this one, which was made for Tomorrow Mag. Um, and this piece, which I just think is so exciting. It really speaks to some of the space oriented aesthetics that I like to play with. So I'm biased, but I, I just love how simple this piece is and how simple the lines are in this work. Another piece that I really am excited about by a different artist um, is this work by Lyle Reimer. So Lyle Reimer is an, another artist who I found on Instagram. Um, you can tell a lot of my inspiration comes from this platform. And his work is just really exciting because it has so many different kinds of materials all folded and and stitched together. So you can see all kinds of scraps that he's like labeling as garbage for this Machino um, uh, mask uh, that was featured in Vogue Italy. And so if you really take a close look, you'll see like a, a pick and uh, a mask over here, some other kinds of pieces that you might recognize. And I just think that it's really beautiful array of objects. This one is my ultimate fav favorite from Lyle Reimer because it really demonstrates the way in which you can use these kinds of materials to send a message. So this is a uh, collaboration between Lyle Reimer and FKA Twigs, the singer songwriter, and they created this mask for Earth Day. Um, so the purpose of this mask was to take things that were, you know, perceived as trash or garbage and turn them into something more beautiful, something that would be worth recycling in interesting ways. You can see there's like egg cartons here and magazine scraps. And uh, if we scroll to the next image, you can see there's like discarded clothing on this mask, um, some burlap sacks, maybe like which once held coffee beans, some bottle caps, some old rope, some paper. And, and I just think that these are so beautiful, as well as a, a prime example of how you can work with other artists to create pieces in the category of mass that are also trying to communicate a message. And, and we're going to be trying to communicate a story in our mass, but I do think that a message and a story require the same kind of muscular energy for your brain, um, the same kind of, uh, you know, mental gymnastics on like, both what you're trying to communicate, but also thinking about how an audience would receive that message and whether that message is coming across clearly or whether we do want, in fact, that message to be coming across clearly. So here's some more of Lyle's work. I, I highly recommend, if you want to, to take a look at some of the beautiful pieces that are here. Um, and the other example I wanted to show you in the world of creative expression for mass is this other account called False Face. Now, this account is a huge array of different kinds of masks. Some of them are modern contemporary art, um, like, like this piece, for instance, pieces that are made for labels like Dior. Some of them are experimental and a little less refined in terms of a client at the end of it. They're more of like an art project. And other pieces are uh, cultural depictions of masks. So masks that are 
commonly worn in other countries um, for purposes of you know, community, ritual, connectivity, um, coming together to celebrate. And I think as, a, as an archive, it's just a really incredible set of examples of what's possible in the world of mass making and what's already happening in the world of mass making. And, you know, I think we could find a lot of joy and excitement and inspiration from an account like this. So yeah, these are some examples of creative expression. And so I want to, now that we've had a glimpse at what people are doing for creative expression, I want us to think about what we want to create. So this is the part where we want to take our journal out and start to consider not only what our creative expression related mass would look like, so a doodle or drawing about what a mass that helps you creatively express yourself, what would it look like? But also your identity in this space of creative expression can be conveyed as a story as well. So what kind of what kind of thing are you trying to express? How does it relate to you? Are you your ordinary self in this situation? Or are you trying to express this uh, emotion or feeling from a different identity that belongs to you? So for me, I'm going to write a story around a character I like to perform a lot in my art practice. She's black. She's also from space. And she spends her time roving the galaxy, trying to look for different kinds of people who f make her feel like she's at home. So she's sort of spacey, sort of human-esque, and um, my mask is going to look a lot like that, and, uh, and my AR filter is going to look a lot like that. And so I'm going to take a minute to write down my story. And then after I write down my story, I'm going to do a little illustration. And I actually made an illustration of the mass in the promotional photo for this class. So I'll, I'll show you that and remind you what that looks like. And then we're going to take like a tiny slice of that and bring it into Spark AR. So we're going to dream big on paper and then recognize that, of course, we're like still beginners. And so we're going to take like a little piece of that of that big dream and then uh, find a way to execute it in Spark AR um, as we like go on in our AR futures. We can of course return to these exercises and build them out to be like far grander. But in this one context, we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna be kind to ourselves and start small. So step one, what does your mask look like? Who are you in this mask? And what are you trying to creatively express? So this doesn't have to be tied to culture, not tied to protection, not tied to disguise. This one's all about creative expression. So what are you trying to express? What is the story behind that version of yourself? And what does that mask look like if you had all the, all the materials in the world? Um, and maybe start to think about how that might translate to uh, to an AR filter. So that's what we're gonna start with. Take a couple minutes to do that now, and then after you're done, hit play again in this video, and we'll go into Spark AR and start applying some of those creative new skills to our uh, paper-based drawing. All right, here we are, Spark AR. So, we um, are just going to create a new project. As you can see, there's like a million things you can use just like right off the bat, but we're creative technologists. So we want to be able to learn it ourselves and you know go through the whole rigmarole of like starting a project from scratch to learn how it works. So hit new project. And we're just gonna do a blank project. So we've got a whole bunch of things that we want to look at here. So this is our interface. There's a lot going on, but trust me, before you know it, you're going to be smooth sailing with this stuff. So uh, the first thing we want to look at is just the kinds of like ways in which we describe each area. So we have the main area. This is our viewport. So this is where we see an example of both like the 3D space that makes up our filter 
as well as like an example of what it might look like on the phone. So as you can see, this is, this is not me. Um, so you have all these different options. You can change your viewport to be like the kind of phone you might have, which might be interesting for you, or the kind of phone you might aspire to have, or maybe the iPad that you have, et cetera, et cetera. Um, or you can make this a video of yourself. So I'm gonna go do that now. So here in the toolbar way at the left-hand side, I'm gonna hit video and I'm gonna choose my webcam. It's gonna boot up. And you can see here I am. Um, my audio is gonna be a little out of sync from what you're seeing in this webcam because it's like going through a render process in the software. So don't get freaked out if these are not aligned. You're, your video is working fine. Um, okay, so now we've updated our viewport and we're going to look at the other areas of our, um, of our interface. So we have the assets area. So this is where all of our textures, any designs that we make, any graphics, anything of that nature is gonna end up here. Um, this is our scene panel. So this scene panel allows for us to play with different uh, features of Spark AR. So some things that are going to help us like capture the movement of the face, some things that are going to help us determine like particular expressions, and we'll get into all of that as we get deeper into the workshops. Um, and we have uh, the inspector. So the inspector is on this right hand side. So these are all of the functions and details and things that are going to help us make small adjustments to the features and to our textures. So that is, uh, that is everything um, that we really care about at this one moment. So in this first exercise, again, we're thinking about creative expression, mass for creative expression. And so refer back to your um, drawing and think about that as we move through this. Uh, we're going to use this first activity as a um, as like a basic introduction. So you can come back to this part of the video after you try it with some ordinary assets and, uh, and then, you know, add all of the like details that you want to add that make it look like your own filter. Okay. So in this first activity, we're going to learn how to do two things as beginners. We're going to learn how to, change the background and we're going to learn how to apply some textures to our face. So hopefully with those two elements in mind you might find like a small piece of your design that you drew that can be applied to this activity. Okay so here we go. The first thing we want to do is we are going to um, think about and talk about the background and the foreground. So uh, if you've taken an art class maybe, or what other class might this show up in? Um, yeah, maybe just art in elementary school and high school. You have the definition of the foreground and the background that becomes a part of how you paint paintings or how you might look at a photograph. So obviously uh, they kind of say in their name what they are, but the foreground is, the, is our figure in this case the silhouette of our body and the background is everything that's happening behind us and so we're going to create some color or some like you know images that can happen in the background and in the foreground uh, we'll isolate our body so that it's separate from those spaces okay so the first thing that we need to do is we need to add uh, some elements to our scene so here we've got um, like kind of like a, a bunch of different layers here. And I wanna show you how these arrows move. So if I close this, for instance, um, it sucks up and creates the rest of the elements to disappear. If I open it, you can see that inside of that folder is a camera and the focal distance and the microphone. Um, and so these are obviously nested folders, but you can also, as we begin to add things, start to think about all the elements we add as being connected to the thing there beneath. So we're about to add an element to the camera feature. And so, yeah, that's gonna be an element that's nested inside of the camera folder, but in the world of technology, we also call that a child. So just like how like you are connected to your parents, 
And sure, you might be in the like family folder, if you will, of people who live in your house, but you're also a child of that parent. So yeah, there's like two ways of defining these kinds of things. So we're going to click on the camera here in the scene. And before we add anything, we just want to tell it what kind of um, elements, what kind of code to be running in the background. So we want to segment out the foreground and the background. So if we go over to the inspector, we can see that there's a segmentation here, the word segmentation, and we're just going to add that so that the Spark AR software understands that we're working with person segmentation here. Okay, so that's the first thing we want to do. The second thing we want to do is now add our first child, which is a rectangle. So we want to go to the scenes. This is where we are. Click on camera, add an object, and scroll down. I know it's going to be really tempting to try all of these out, and you totally can later on. But for now, we're just going to go down to rectangle, and we're going to insert this rectangle. And you can see it shows up here in the corner of our screen. And so this rectangle is a 2D layer that's going to act as our background. So now that we have this rectangle, click on that in there if it's not clicked in and blue already. And we're going to try and make this rectangle take up the whole screen. So, you know, we could try to guess the numbers in the pixels. So these numbers are like the width in pixels of our screen and the height in pixels. This one is the height in pixels of our, of our screen. But as you probably know, uh, iPhone 8 is going to be a different pixel dimension than an iPad or like an Android is going to be a different pixel dim dimension than like a Samsung. So, um, or a Galaxy rather. So instead of determining what the numbers are, we're going to use this variable called fill width. And this is just going to stretch whatever our background is to the width of our screen. We'll also do fill height. So now this completely stretches and is kind of like an elastic component that will stretch to fit the background of a iPad or a Galaxy phone or a Samsung or an iPhone or whatever. So we have all of that in now. And now for this rectangle, we also want to add a material because this is like not the prettiest background, this grid. I mean, maybe you like it and you might um, find it interesting. If we were to export this filter right now, it's not going to look like this grid. This is kind of like a placeholder. So we want to add our own material to it. So we're going to go down here in the inspectors area. We're going to click the plus sign and it gives us an automatic material. So you can see that um, the material is like an automatic gray color, but we're gonna make it more interesting than that. So that showed up here, but it also show, showed up in the materials area here. And so uh, what we wanna do before we get any further down this rabbit hole, we want to rename some of these things so that we start to remember what they're associated to. So here in the materials section, we're going to click on this, we can right click on it to rename it. And let's call this background material. Um, while we're at it, we've attached this, you know, this background material to our rectangle that we just made. We can remind ourselves how if we click on this rectangle, it opens the inspector and down here in materials, you'll see the same name, background material, and we just renamed this background material so we can see that they're connected. So let's rename the rectangle too so that we know that this is the background rectangle. Okay, so now let's go back down here to the materials tab. When we click on this material um, in the assets 
section of our interface, we get all of these great options. So the first kind is to think about these things as a shader. A shader is a kind of texture in 3D and, and 2D environments. And there's all kinds of different types of shaders. And we are gonna use, because this background doesn't bend or have to like mold around anything, we're gonna use the flat shader type. This also helps us have like a high performance of this shader so that it doesn't take a lot of time to lag and load. Okay, cool. So here we are. You can see right away there's some things you might recognize. So here you can see like the opacity. So you can see here's my face. If you're looking here in the in the viewfinder, um, you can determine like what kind of opacity you want. Remember this texture is going to be ultimately behind us. So you don't have to be too worried about whether you can see our face right now. We're, we're definitely going to get there. Um, yeah, so now um, we're going to think about what we want this texture to look like. So we could have a color in the background. So you can pick your favorite color or something interesting in the background if you want. So you just pick the color you want and you hit okay. I actually think that it would be more fun to have an image. So I made a folder of images I really like. So I'm just gonna go grab this space image as I told you all before. Sometimes I like to think about space. Um, oh, that's cool, I never saw that. So I didn't realize that this space image was a PNG. So usually these stars are white, but because I chose a, a orange background now they're showing up orange which is cool now i'm going to try i'm going to change them to be like pink or something that's cool okay cool so here's my new background so it's a galaxy maybe i'll make it a little lighter so they still look like slightly pink stars um so it's a it's a spacey background um so that's going to be what's behind my body in um, this filter. So you can pick whatever you want, whatever is associated to your story, to your narrative, pick, pick something aligned with that. Okay, so we need one more feature before we can create our, 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 uh, our filter. So we want to go back to camera. We're going to go to its inspector and in the inspector we'll see a new category called texture extraction. And we're going to add the camera texture. So this will help us add new functionalities with the camera so that we can pick out our silhouette. Um, now, back in the scene, we'll add a new rectangle. So go down to add object, add rectangle, insert. Again, this rectangle shows up only in the corner of the screen. So we have to go add our command to fill the width and height. And then we'll attach a new material to it. So create a new material. And let's rename everything like we said last time so we don't get too lost. This is our foreground rectangle. And this is our foreground material. Great. And now that we have the material clicked, let's go to our inspector. And in the inspector, we're going to choose the flat option again, because this is not something that's going to curve to our body. This is still going to be a flat 2D image that just has our outline cut out of it. So now um, that we've got that covered, we can go a little lower and go to the texture of the shader and we've got some new options here. This time we want to choose our first texture as the camera texture. So here we are back in the scene in the viewport you can see yourself and again we can take a look here and we can you know change the opacity if we want to but you know this really only gives us the option of like just us or just the background and what we really want is both at the same time. So we need to hit this button, the alpha button. And now this illuminates a couple of new features. And one of them 
is the person segmentation. So if you hit that, now the alpha channel is going to be looking at and thinking about the person segmentation features in Spark AR. And now you can see in the viewfinder that we have an outline of ourselves as a filter, which is really exciting. So we did it. You can still think of uh, changing the opacity. Like, you know, if I put my opacity, opacity a little lower, it kind of looks like I'm, I don't know, some kind of, you know, ghostly image in space. Um, so uh, you can decide what you want to do with the opacity of your, of your foreground. Um, but yeah, we just made our first filter. So a couple other fun features, the, you know, the sky is the limit with these, um, rectangles. So you can keep adding and, and creating new rectangles if you want to. So one thing that I think is really cool, I just want to show you is how you can create one that is, uh, you know, outlining the human body, but overlaying another image on top of it. So let me just show you that really quickly. I'm going to change my um, face and body here. Instead of showing it as it actually is, I'm going to be like a galaxy that's amorphous in, the, in space. So I'm going to go back to um, the scene. I'm going to add an object. You guessed it, a rectangle. And let's call this galaxy silhouette. Um, oh, and I'd like to keep calling them rectangle at the end so I know what it is, even though, of course, there's this little graphic that helps us. Um, all right, and then over here, we're going to do the same thing. Fill the width, fill the height, add a new material, rename that material, galaxy silhouette um, material. Cool. Over here, we'll change it to be flat. Um, this time, uh, let's see, where do you think we should add it? So we've got this, if we make this normal, we've got our camera texture and we've got this one as our person segmentation. So we like, you know, we've just kind of like replicated our previous rectangle again. Um, where do you think I should add my galaxy? If I want the galaxy to be over my image, where do you think I should add it? To our alpha channel or to our shader properties? Think about where we added our spacey background and the color pink initially. I'm going to try adding it here to this texture. And I'm going to go to new texture because I have it saved on a folder in my computer. There it is. Cool. Cool. So here I am as like a spacey kind of creature. And we could stop here if we wanted to. <laughs> We're going to go a little further because I want us to be able to like add some assets to my to your face and body. I really love this filter though. It's really cool. And it's really reminiscent of a filter that already exists. So there's like some cool things that are happening here that I think might be interesting to you. For instance, like if I like inverted this, like here I am, there's my filter layered behind me. I'm going to go back. Um, ultimately, I'm going to end up deleting this cool galaxy uh, silhouette. So this is the last time we'll look at it. All right. Uh, and if you're ever curious about what my what I'm actually doing, because you can't see me in real time, or uh, you can take a look down here. Here are my um, here's my arm like outside of the view. You can have like a full picture version of me and like a little slice in the middle. But you can see I'm like waving my hands in front of it here. Okay, so uh, I'm going to delete my galaxy, even though it's really fun. So I'm just going to click on it, hit delete on my keyboard, hit delete here on my materials. Cool. I'll leave it in the textures. It's fine. Um, so now I wanted to just show you foreground. Um, 
I wanted to just show you uh, in our foreground material that there's this cool feature that lets you invert it. So if you were in foregrounds and our assets in our inspector where the alpha channel was, you can hit invert and all of a sudden you become the spacey background and everything outside of you is normal, which I think is really cool. And is actually really similar to a, a Instagram filter that already exists. So I'm gonna screen record myself on my phone using that filter and then I'll put it up next to this video. I will put it up playing right now. And you can see like, we're already making filters that like exist on the internet, which is kind of cool. And it shows you just how quickly this, this process is, how quick this process is, but also poses some questions like, why is it so fast? Um, what parts of this haven't we seen? We're gonna, we're gonna get to that. Okay, I'm gonna put it back to normal. So you can see the spacey space that we're in. And now let's look at um, adding some features. So this is like where we can also step outside of Spark AR for a second. Um, there is this other place on the internet that's really helpful for these things. So what we wanna do is create some assets. And by assets, I mean like some things, some things that we want to add to our um, face when we're creating this filter, this mask. So uh, let's go to the site that I really like. It's called pixlr.com. So this is a free version of Photoshop basically. And so like I use Photoshop and Illustrator all the time, which I, I really like, but like also Pixlr is this other great uh, editing software that is free and you can just like use for as long as you want. You don't even need an account. Um, so, you know, I think it's a really fun way to create assets and you can export them as PNGs and we'll add them to the set. So like for right now, for instance, we're going to add some features to our face and I guess, you know, maybe I'll show you first, um, back in Spark AR before I go too far into Pixlr. But um, think about Pixlr because we're gonna we're gonna use it, especially if you don't have Adobe Photoshop or Illustrator, which like lots of people don't. This is like a really great, pretty much the same free version of those softwares. Okay, so let's add the first texture, and then I'll show you what you need to be thinking about in Pixlr when you're creating those textures. Um, all right, so inside of our camera area again, we're gonna add a new object. This time, we want to add what's called a uh, face tracker. So it's right here at the top. Insert the face tracker. And so the face tracker is, uh, you'll now see um, that if you look down here, let's see if I can zoom in here a little bit. Yeah, okay, you can see that my face is being followed by these axes. So it's kind of hard to see, but there's actually an arrow attached to like the um, leftmost side of my face, it comes out to about here. You can see it's like a light gray, gray arrow. And there's another arrow here that's coming out to the right of my face, comes out to about here. Yeah. It's hard to like mind these, but yeah. So these are axes, there's actually one above my head as well. So it's now tracking the movement of my face. So you should see these arrows now too. And so this is gonna be like collecting information about how we're moving our face, where we're moving our face. Um, now that we have that, we want to create a, uh, a child of the face tracker. So we're gonna right click on the face tracker. We're gonna say add. And what we wanna add is the face mesh. So this is now going to be, as you can see, this like mass that we used to see in our background is being like applied to our face. And so this is now on understanding the contours of our face. So it's taking some like depth information from my camera to understand where the contours are of my face. So now that we're here, uh, we're going to take a look, I guess let's, how do we rename this? Let's rename it in a second. Um, so here we have our inspector for the face, for the face mesh. 
And we want to add, just like before, a new material. We're going to create a brand new one. Okay. And you can see that this material shifts the way my face looks. <laughs> so why does it do that? Um, so when we click on the material that we just generated, and we go up to the shader type. Right now we're in standard. And each one of these different kinds is gonna change the way our mass looks. So here you can see it's really, really flat. This one, as we just saw, looks like a standard kind of like mask, although it's not representing my facial features all that accurately. And you can try out some of the other ones, but because we're creating things that are supposed to look like they're a part of our face, right now we're going to use the face paint effect. So now you can really see, we can get a little closer to the camera. Now you can really see that it's changing, it's changed in contour to my actual facial features and you can even see the outline of my eyebrows and lips, et cetera. Okay, so now this is collecting additional information about our face um, and this is, you know, thinking about <clears throat> thinking about how much thinking about how much information it has right now. Like, what kinds of information do you think this filter has about your face right now, from a data perspective? What is it collecting about your face right now? Um, I want you to just sort of think about those things as we go through it, because the interesting thing about software like this is it's not immediately exposing you to the information that's being collected about your face. We're going to come back to that at the end of the session. So here we've got more features. You can kind of like see our opacity again, changes, what it looks like. You can change the brightness. But what's, what's more interesting than like this kind of like you know, automatic white mask that gets applied is adding our own textures. So I've actually made a couple that I'm really excited about. Um, I'm going to open up this pink triangle first. Okay, <laughs> here's this pink triangle. Um, depending on your camera, you might have to change one more setting too. So before we go any further, this is how your, your asset is going to appear on your face kind of like this. And if you lean away from your camera and your asset kind of disappears, we, we have to change one more setting. If it doesn't, you don't have to worry about that. But you can see that like as I lean in and out of my camera, um, my asset changes, it disappears, it shrinks off my face. So I just need to go down here to the advanced render options. And I just need to turn off this like depth test. And now that it's off, I can like lean back as far as I want and my filter, my triangle doesn't change. Okay, so here's my triangle. I made this triangle in Pixlr. It's just a simple triangle filled with pink. Um, I can show you in a second. Uh, and I want to like move it over my left eye because I think that would look pretty cool and fits aligned with the kind of like creative expression my character in my head is trying to, to uh, communicate. So we want to go down to the tiling options and look at the offset. So now that we have this offset, it's at zero, zero, which means that this is the like center orientation of our triangle. I really made this triangle in the middle of my Pixlr window. Um, now, if I change these numbers, let's see what happens. So let's say I add just like a little bit to our first number. This is kind of the experiment I do when I come across two new numerical interfaces that are unlabeled. I like change it a little bit and see what happens. Okay, it's gone, which isn't very helpful. Let me see if it's on my left cheek or my right cheek. No, she's gone. Okay, let me change it by a little bit less. So let's see, maybe like half that. So if I change it to 0 0.5, let's see if it appears anywhere on my cheek. Oh, there it is. You can see a little bit of it here on my cheek. So I guess this number changes the X position of the location of that asset. Um, 
I knew that it did, but I wanted us to discover it together. So that's a little too far. I want to change it like a little less. So let's see what this looks like. That looks like a little closer. I'm going to change it by a little more and let's move it up a little bit. So do you think a higher number will move it up or a lower number? What do you think? Why don't we change it by the same amount, a slightly higher number? Cool, slightly higher number, moves this a little higher up on the screen. I want it a little lower so it catches my nose too. Okay, cool, so here is my triangle over my right eye, which feels a little like David Bowie-esque um, Ziggy Stardust, which maybe is a reference you don't recognize, but you should Google it, it's really cool. Um, so, uh, that's like part one. So you can see like how this is going to get really exciting really fast um, because you can start to build out what this facial feature, what this facial filter is going to look like. Let me add one more and then I'll show you how you could make this in Pixlr. So um, let me change some of these names so that they reflect the right thing. So we've got pink triangle material. And here, rename pink triangle face mesh. All right, and so now I, I don't have to worry about um, forgetting what those are about. Oh, you can really see the axes of the mask now um, that it's not taking up my whole face. You can really see how it's like changing and recognizing and tracking the position of the face. Okay, so now let's add another one. Um, let's add another one so that we uh, have something a little more interesting than just this pink triangle. I have this really cool space eyelash that I made again in Pixlr. So let me go add that. We gotta go kind of like a few steps back. So inside of the um, scene, let's right click on our face tracker and click Add, we're gonna go get another face mesh. I already know that this is gonna become a space eyelash, so let's just name it that now, space. Eyelash, face mesh. Okay, and now that I have this again, remember what we did last time, we go to the inspector and in the inspector, we add a new material. We're gonna create that new material from scratch. I'm gonna rename this material because I know that it's gonna end up being a space eyelash material. We're gonna change it from standard to face paint. And we're going to change uh, it from this like white texture to the texture that we upload. So nah, 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 space eyelash upload. Cool, you can't see it like super well yet, but it's this, maybe if I tilt my head this way, it's see this like kind of like liney thing over here. I'm gonna move that to be underneath my right eye. Okay, so here we go again. Um, we know that a higher number moved our pink triangle over to the left. So maybe a lower number will move our eyelash over to the right. So what's lower than zero? It's a negative number. So let's try negative 0 0.5. See how far over, oh, we got pretty far. A little too far. Maybe 0 0.4, cool. And then a high number, remember, like moved our pink triangle up. So to move this eyelash down below my eye, I need to use a negative number. Let's try the same amount, 0 0.4. It's almost like a mustache, that's too low. That's a little better. I need to move this over just a touch. Yeah, maybe a tiny bit more. Yeah. Cool, and it's starting to look a little bit like our collab graphic. Let me go show you um, the graphic that I made for the collab. 
Okay, here we go. That's the graphic, right? So colors are a little bit different, but you're, you can start to see like there's that big pink triangle. Here's that like eyelash that I made. So I'm like trying to build this out. I've got some cool dots for eyebrows and like another triangle and, you know, keeps going. You could go on forever really, but we've got this cool thing now. So great. We have what we like. I'm really stoked about this. I'm gonna keep working on this, but I wanna make sure that you can also work on this stuff too. So now let's go back to Pixlr, as I said, and I'll show you a little bit more about how I did this. So, okay, so here we are. I wanna choose Pixlr E, um, Pixlr E for editor. There's like Express, which is really quick. And there are like some more like paid options for like, advanced usage of, of Pixlr, but here let's use Pixlr E. Um, I'm going to uh, create a new one. Collab module. And uh, now I know from working with Spark AR several times or for a while now that the facial features that are created by them in their demo kit tend to be 14 inches by 14 inches in the width and the height, which translates to a thousand pixels by a thousand pixels. Um, this is just something like I, I've, I've learned over the years. So uh, we're going to make ours a thousand by a thousand. We don't want a background because we want that to continue to be transparent so that we don't see anything like we get to see just the triangle or whatever shape you're creating and then our face underneath it. So now that we've changed that, we're gonna hit create and we get this background and like surprise, we get this like checkerboard background once again. And the checkerboard is a really like normal indication that something's gonna be transparent, which is great. Um, you can see there's a whole bunch of options here on the on the left hand side and all of these things are really exciting because they let you uh, create elements in this fake Photoshop Pixlr world. So you can really play around with these things. You can add text, you can add gradients, you can draw things, you can add, you can like import images if you want to. Um, but uh, I'm going to add a shape. I'll just show you the shapes. And this is where I added my triangle. Right. So I just clicked that triangle and I dragged it. I want to center it a little by clicking the mouse and putting it in the center. You'll see these like purple lines appear when it tells you it's in the proper middle. So this is because it's the middle of the middle. It's going to, as we saw, cover my nose. If I was smart right now and I wanted this triangle to cover like one area of my face, I might try to like guesstimate where that is. So like lower might be my lips, upper left or right might be my eye, you know, cheeks are around here or here. You, you get the idea. So um, now that we have this image, we can fill it with whatever we want. This white is our outline, you can see. Um, and this black is the way that we filled it. Let's fill the color to be different. So, so you need to make sure that you're clicking on the right layer over here in the layer section. And now we can hit the paint bucket, which is this over here. And we could fill it to be white if we wanted to. I'd like it to be pink. So you can switch these colors and make this a pink triangle now. Or you can double click on that pink, change it to whatever color you want. Maybe you want something different, like an orange. Hit OK. And you can fill it to be orange now. And then, um, you know, you're getting towards building out your asset. You can draw it and you can explore some of those features. Um, and here is everything we've done so far in the history. So you can also like hit undo and go back a couple layers if you wanted to. Okay, so now that we're, we have like an orange triangle that we could add if we wanted to, um, we want to be able to save this image. So now we go to file, we hit save. 
And it's really important that we have our saved image as a PNG, which is a kind of image format that ensures that there's no background color. So all of this will continue to be transparent. You can try saving it as a JPEG if you want, but it will fill the background with like a white or a gray. So we want to continue as best we can to save them as PNGs. All right, and then you hit download and there it goes. Downloads and you can add that to your um, Spark AR filter. So you can keep playing, and like I said, I made those lines, I made those eyelashes, whatever you want to make for your face, this is where you can start, or Photoshop, or Illustrator, like whatever you have. So back here, um, I'm gonna save this and I'm gonna open up the one that's done so I can show you what it ended up looking like. So let's save this as Culture Hub Module 1 Tutorial. And I'll just open up the previous one. All right, so here we are. I mean, if this is that guy again, um, I'm gonna change this to be my camera. And here we go, there we are. So yeah, so this is, your, this is the end of the filter. <laughs> I've gotten like close like a, it's like a slight adaptation of what I did on the promo, uh, the promo um, graphic, uh, which I was excited to kind of like adapt. Um, so this is what I have. And the cool thing about it is that uh, right now you could um, look at it through here if we wanted to, but you can also download the Spark AR app see if uh, if I go down here, follow my mouse to the test on device icon here, you can get the Spark AR player app if you wanted to for like a mobile device, you don't have to. And you can try it out on your Spark AF, uh, AR app. So I'm gonna switch back to our other video setting and I'll show you what that looks like and I'll add a screen recording so you can see as well. All right, okay, so we just made our first filter, which is really exciting. Hopefully you've made something that is connected to the creative expression you wrote down and thought about in your notebook. Um, we're not done with the notebook just yet, but I just wanted to show you what it looks like on your phone. So um, I have my phone here with the Spark AR app. I'm gonna try to make it clear here. Um, it's like being really reflective, but you can see it's like on my face. You can get a glimpse of like what it looks like and maybe I'll just um, add it like over here, like a screen recording of it so that you can see it. And uh, yeah, like that is how you make a very basic filter in um, Spark AR. Now, it's exciting and yeah there's lots of really cool things that we just did but now i want us to do like one more writing exercise before we end i want you to think about like what does our computer based on this filter know about us so far so think about what we created think about all the ways that we were able to do it like just like that and i want you to think about what the computer knows and how we know that it knows those things. So I, I spoiled a couple of them as we went along. I talked about how the computer knows and is collecting data about the direction of your face. So the way, the position that you move. And we saw that from those, um, those like axes that were connected to our face. But I want you to think about like, what else does it know about us? Does it know the position of our facial features? Does it know the dimension of our head? Try to write down as many things that it knows about you as possible so we can create this list of like what our computer knows about us. Because the funny thing about technology is that especially now with the intention of everything being really fast and really fluid, we start to lose track of what our computer is gathering about us. So we didn't see any of the data coming in about what the 
computer knows about us. We didn't see any of the numbers. We didn't see any of that stuff. And, and as we go through the modules, I'm going to show you more and more of that, but you can see how easy it is to create these things without really getting an understanding of like how they work deeply or what information is being collected. And, and it's cool that we made it and it's really great, but it is great to also think about like, to be consciously thinking about when we give computers permission to know things about us and when computers take the liberty to collect that information. So just as an ex exercise in criticality, let's just write down everything we think the computer knows about us. Um, and then, you know, really celebrate that we made this filter and also celebrate the idea that we're building an additional knowledge about how our computer communicates with us and also how the computer gathers information about us. So yeah, this is all about thinking about these things in tandem, curiosity, creativity, criticality. And I'm just really happy that you made it to the end of this video. Congratulations, this is great. And I hope you go to the next one, which is all about mass as protection. Great, thanks.